Hi. Hey. Hello. And now our feature presentation. It's sunny, and well,、uh, it's December. You know what time it is? It's the worst holiday ever. Not just kidding. Uh, it's uh, it's okay. I'm not a fan of Christmas, but I am a fan of movies. And so, for today's video, we'll be talking about a、uh, just movie, nothing Christmas related. Shit. Well,、uh, it's about a family get together, so it counts somewhat. I don't, I don't know. Okay. For Alright, I'll explain to you across this video why this film is a banger and、uh, somewhat has a Christmas feel, or at least makes sense to do a video on for this time of year. Tokyo Story was inspired by the 1937 American film Make Way for Tomorrow, directed by Leo McCary, which it loosely adapts to director Yasujiro Ozu's style and Japanese influence. Both films, though having similar premises, differ in their executions. As Make Way takes place in a Depression-era U.S., tackling economic issues, whilst Tokyo Story is in a post-war Japan and deals with cultural and emotional affairs. The script was developed by Ozu and his collaborator Kogo Noda for 103 days in a real con called Chigasaki Con in Chigasaki, Kanagawa. According to actor Chishu Ryu. Ozu was always happiest when finishing the final draft of any script, and there were never any changes to the final draft, and all for good reason. Tokyo Story is just true cinema at its finest. The way Tokyo Story presents itself is so gorgeous. I love how the film is so soothing, cozy, and warm in terms of its emotional feedback presented across the visuals and music. The score by Takunobu Saito is generally effective for just how simplistic it is, and really adding so much serenity to the overall atmosphere of the film. Always allowing the dialogue to speak for itself, but also influence the vibe of the scenery across the movie. I also just love how the cinematography in general, just the way it manages to capture Tokyo and just life itself, both in the story for truly feeling human and how grounded it all feels, but also capture the world they inhabit. It especially holds up to today's age by showcasing life in Tokyo back in the 1950s, making this an even better timeless classic. I also love the overall framing, how we scale back on everything to witness everything in such great detail. But when it comes to every character interaction, we solely focus in on their faces, which, aided by the great editing, always shifts perspectives when they're delivering dialogue. Allowing us not only to really pay attention to the characters, but also allow the cast to really give the roles everything they got, especially in letting us see their genuine emotion. The overall production is just great too throughout the entire film. Sometimes I feel like I was just watching a documentary focused on real people. The way the film captures Tokyo and all the other Japanese locations never once feels like it's supposed to feel cinematic in a genuine way. Even the moments in the incredible sets that are greatly designed and every character's details, down to the extras' costumes and overall lighting, really emulates realism and never feeling out of touch. It feels like real places and not movie places. It's just a very genuine movie that knows what makes filmmaking so special, but also knows characters really credit the film. We have a lot of characters to get through, so let's not waste any time. One thing I love about this film is how though the characters are normal, don't have too many flaws, and aren't given much depth. They are still incredibly interesting, likable, and perfectly serviceable to the overall film. Koichi and Shiga are the oldest children in the film of this family gathering, and are really interesting in that sometimes they come off as uncaring about their grandparents and such, but really are a great examination of how children become so. Independent from their parents as time passes, being adults who have good intentions and may have their flaws, but are simply always busy and have their own lives to worry about. 
There are significant others in that of Fumiko and Kurazo expand upon this by being support for them and a part of their lives, detailing how they much focus on themselves and the people around them. The grand kids Minoru and Isamu are simple troubled kids that have good hearts and are simply going through ordinary childhood experiences, being bratty but well intended and too are very naive to that of the event that is life itself. Of course you have the youngest of the kids, Keizo and Kyoko, who are some of the more interesting characters despite their limited runtime. We get to know Kyoko right as the film begins and even towards the end as being the youngest, she's the one who leeches off the most from their grandparents and greatly showcasing her most important scene. She has such a young heart and is too going to experience life. Keizo might be the most interesting one since he seems to be a well-intended figure as well but was late to the funeral in the film's climax and is a very guilt-tripped persona who easily faults himself for his mistakes, is emotionally complicated, and follows largely in philosophy. It reminds me of myself, honestly. Of course though, by far the best characters in the film are easily the leading trio in that of the grandparents, Shukichi and Tomi, and the daughter-in-law, Noriko. These can easily be considered some of the most well-written movie characters of all time for how Tomi and Shukichi are such wise, humble, but still flawed and inspiring individuals that truly are noble about the film's events and are such an adore to watch on screen due to their responses to living out their final days together being with their kids and in Tokyo. Noriko is also easily my personal favorite being such a nice and heartfelt protagonist in her own flaws, not allowing herself to move on from her deceased husband, youngest son of the two, Shoji. Being such a great character who generally does everything out of her kindness, heart, and free will, and such a perfect dynamic with our two lovable elders. Generally, the entire cast is so perfect with how they portray these characters in such a humble yet clearly more emotional interior that is perfection, but all of it wouldn't work without this ageless script. What do I have to say? Tokyo Story is just an all-time banger. What makes the script perfect is how the script, for the most part, lacks a story. For the first half of the film, it takes the simple premise of grandparents visit their kids for a vacation and does it perfectly in execution. Great films can be complex, obviously, but great films can also work on the same level with simplicity, having simple premises but doing so much emotionally and impactfully through execution. It works because for the first half, we the audience are alongside Tomi and Shukichi in their emotional experience, and during the everyday moments of life in Tokyo and are swept up in the cozy warmth of their journey. But come the second half, when the very impactful passing of Tomi really brings in the beauty of the story, allowing us the audience to get familiar and attached to these characters, only to warm us into their family through this tragedy and feel both sad and yet humble about it. It is such masterclass writing. What really makes this film such a masterclass as well is just its general themes. The film has clear upfront symbolism of the dynamic shift in a family in a post-World War II state. How the event heavily impacted Noriko in her overall emotional state. Also that of how things just aren't the same socially, which is examined in the sequence in the bar between Shukichi and Senpei. which explores the overall central concept of how children over time grow apart from their parents. As I stated earlier, how it's inevitable, though family will always be family. Over time, you have to learn to be independent and learn to love yourself, which is detailed highly and by far the best scene in the entire movie, which showcases everything that I need to say. <laughs> お父様やお母様が思ってらっしゃるほど。そういつもいつも正治さんのことばかり考えてるわけじゃありません。いいんじゃよ。忘れてくれて。でも、この頃思い出さない人やあるんです。忘れてる日が多いんです。私いつまで
どこか心の隅で何か待ってるんですずるいんですいやずるはないいいえずるいんですそういうことお母様には申し上げられなかったんですいいんじゃよそれでやっぱりあんたはええ人じゃよ正直でとんでもない What more do I need to say? What didn't I say? What I said here in this video isn't even enough to express the genius and impact that is this masterpiece known as Tokyo Story. A film with such soothing and restful filmmaking that sweeps you into its world with ease. A well rounded array of characters that are noble and perfectly flawed. And a heartfelt story that teaches a valuable lesson that we can all take away. And insert into our hearts. A genuine movie for this time around due to its celebration of family, love, independence, and most of all, life. So long, farewell, and goodbye. Same.